I think I'm going to actually put this video in the Rethinking Homework section, but the actual tools and some of the intricacies of the Moodle part of it will be in the quiz unit. Um, right now we're sitting in Anthony Paternos's geometry shell. He's actually just started it. And one of the things that he and Mike Harris have been exploring is flipping the classroom. In the simplest sense, um, flipping the classroom is about um, creating opportunities for students to experience the traditional information gathering, the lecture type things at home, that's part of their homework, and then doing their homework or their dissection of the material at school. And a lot of the ways that people do this now that this has become more popular is through the um, creation of video content that uh, teachers can link to from their course web pages. And so we'll be exploring um, that, but I wanted you to see it in concept. So uh, I have a tab open here. I'm going to go to it in um, Tony. He's a math teacher at the high school in his class so that you could see what an assignment that students could do at home might look like. So the very first um, question is not actually a question. It's called a description text, and he embedded a video. And in his video, he used a site, a website called GoAnimate.com. So it's not even a recording from his computer exactly. And then he has five questions. And um, most of these are uh, multiple choice, but in Moodle, you have the ability to create a variety of different question types. And um, as well as embedding content like the video, you can also post an image like he has in question number two and question number three. So it's a very short quiz that students would complete after watching you know, a relatively short video. Um, it might be interesting for you to know if you look on the left hand side that if a teacher were to go into their own quiz, this isn't exactly how it looks for students, they could always preview it, the quiz, they can edit the questions, here's a hot link to do that. They have um, their settings, normally you see what are called the course settings, but when you're in a quiz, um, this looks a little bit different because these are actually quiz settings. So there's some overall settings for the quiz that you can manipulate by hitting edit quiz and again another preview option. Then um, under the unit and the specific piece of content there is what's called the results tab or link and in there you would be able to see if anybody had taken this quiz you would be able to see their attempts and you could filter it which is actually a great option. You could um, filter it to see just the participants who have or have not attempted this quiz. This is great because if you do assign it for homework, then you might have an activity in class the next day based on whether or not somebody has attempted this quiz or how they did in terms of their um, result in, results in the quiz. All right, just want to show you another one here. Um, now I'm in Human Biology Harris. This is also a high school teacher. And in his, I'm just going to click on the play button here. I'm in the middle of it. You listen for a second. Molecule, for example, it has a hydrogen and a second hydrogen, and both of them are attached to... So what Mike has done is he's recorded what I would consider a traditional screencast, and he recorded this... Um, um, using a tool, a recording tool in Active Inspire. There are other recording options as well um, that, that um, maybe if you're a PowerPoint user, they lend themselves better to that. Um, there's a lot of options for recording. And then in terms of hosting the video, we would do that in YouTube in our apps account. And, you know, creating that account is something else you could be taught as well. So he also has questions, in this case multiple choice, that he um, posted after his video. One other thing to note is that students can always click on this icon in YouTube 
and it will enlarge the screen if they need to see it bigger. And then if I click Escape, then it goes back to the quiz questions. And one last one here. Um, I'll just play a few minutes of, or a few seconds of Tony's. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what makes a good mathematical definition and how do we write them in an if-then statement. So first, let's talk about what makes a good definition. A good definition is specific and detailed. It doesn't have any count. I think you'll get the idea there, and again, his questions. Now, um, creating video and posting it like this is not exclusive to high school. This is something that could be done at any level of learning, and um, it's, it takes time, and so hopefully there would be opportunity to do this in some technology workshops or some cohorts that we have within the district or tech camps or maybe curriculum writings in the summer, that sort of thing that are, is defined as um, time where you are compensated additionally for this kind of effort. And then also, um, there might be opportunity to share videos amongst content or grade level groups. Um, I hope this gives you a taste of a different type of homework. I think parents might find this to be interesting because they could be a little more involved in um, how in the actual content to assist their son or daughter as well. All right.